Now, if Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu goes on to win the election, who will be managing Turkey's economy? One name mentioned to lead the overhaul, Ali Babajan. The former economy minister oversaw an ep economic boom in the 2000s and early 2010s. He's a founding member of Erdogan's AK Party, but resigned in 2019. And Ali Babajan, who is also the chairman of the Deva Party joins us live now from Ankara. Thank you so much um, for being with us. Obviously, the economy, when you think about it, is one of the key issues in this election. You think about just how much inflation has risen, more than 85 percent. You think about the fact that Erdogan has been reluctant uh, to raise interest rates. You think about what that has done to the Turkish lira. Just walk us through what your policies are going to be uh, going forward if you do end up as the economy minister. Well, greetings from Ankara, my hometown. This is the last rally of uh, this election campaign. And we are going to be voting starting from Sunday morning. Uh, Turkey has been going through difficult times, difficult times in terms of economy, in terms of democracy, in terms of foreign relations. And we, ha we are ready to change many things. Actually, this is an election for democracy in Turkey. Yes, I have dealt with the economy for, for a long time. I was also foreign minister of Turkey. And what is needed in Turkey urgently is rule of law, fundamental rights, freedoms, and better functioning democratic system. These are at the fundamentals of our economy. Yes, uh, you were talking to us about some of the economic okay. issues that Turkey has faced over the past couple of years uh, before your shot started crackling. So yeah. could you just walk us through that again, please? Of course. Well, uh, I'm the leader of DEVA now. We are one of the six parties forming the coalition. And uh, after the elections, I will be one of the vice presidents. So there will be ministers in charge of different issues, like economy, like justice, and so forth. But I do have an 11 years of experience in being Turkey's economy minister and deputy prime minister during former times. We, at the fundamentals of our economy, we need to have stronger rule of law. We have to have democracy. We have to have fundamental rights and freedoms. Only by strengthening the fundamentals, we will be able to strengthen our economy. Of course, when we talk about economy, it should be about rationality. It should be about rule-based approach. It should be about strong institutions. So we have to revitalize our main institutions. Also, we have to make sure that there is separation of powers. We have to make sure that, sh that, that there should be checks and balances in our system. What is at the core of the problems right now in Turkey is the system, the presidential, so-called presidential system that was instated in 2018. For the last five years, the system produced lots of issues, lots of problems for Turkey, crisis after crisis. So we are also targeting to change the system so that the system will be a strong parliamentary system. So we are heading for and targeting for a strong democracy in Turkey. Democracy at the standards of the European Union. Democracy at the standards of Council of Europe, which Turkey is a full member of. Obviously, democracy is hugely important, especially given uh, the accusations that Erdogan has really spent the past few years trying to consolidate power and that Turkey has moved towards authoritarianism. But just going back to the economy, one of the reasons why President Erdogan has, of course, been very reluctant to raise interest rates is because he feels as though, or he has felt as though it would damage the economy from a different perspective, just in terms of wanting to make exports that much more attractive. When you think about what that has done, the refusal to raise interest rates and what it meant for the lira back in 2021, the fact that the lira lost a significant percentage of its value from that point onwards, what has that meant for ordinary people in Turkey, especially with inflation, especially with just how much food prices, for example, have risen? Well, at the, at the core of the issue in Turkey, we have the lack of an independent central bank. So the central bank has to be independent and should target price stability. And that is not the case for the years in Turkey has personally got the control of the central bank and the central bank made some irrational steps which made a huge loss of credibility for our monetary policy. And there is actually no economic policy right now in Turkey. There are just some random steps of the government.
government and the random steps of the central bank. That's why I mentioned stronger institutions. So we do need a stronger central bank, which is an independent central bank. We do need a strong treasury. We do need strong banking supervisory and regulation authorities. And only by strong institutions, our economy will be strong. And we have prepared everything. We have agreed on 2,300 steps of reforms as six parties together. And by these reforms, we are going to be moving forward. So we need to have a rational fiscal policy, a rational monetary policy, a rational banking policy, and of course, structural reforms moving forward. Now, I have run Turkish economy in 2003-04 when we had the crisis. I was the head of Turkish economy during the 2008-2009 global crisis, mortgage crisis and so forth. So we had two major rounds of crisis solution. And this will be the third time that we are going to solve this crisis because we have a very good team, very capable and also trustworthy team who are going to be in place right after the elections. We are going to take over and bring rationality. Yeah, there are so many headwinds facing Turkey at once. It's not just the cost of living crisis. It's also what happened with the earthquake, the earthquake costing the economy about 84 so billion dollars, shaving off about 10 percent of Turkey's uh, entire economy. Such a reversal of fortunes, especially given that in the early part of Erdogan's reign, we saw economic expansion, uh, despite some other headwinds that you point out. All right. Thank you so much uh, for being with us. Ali Babashan, live for us there. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Greetings from my right. Of course.